Alrighty, well, um, it is 3.01, so we'll get started. Thanks everybody for coming to the center today virtually. I'm Carolyn Merrick, Program Coordinator here at the center, and it is my great pleasure to host uh, Anne Lasser, who is uh, the Director of Community Engagement at Building Goodness Foundation. If you don't know Building Goodness Foundation, it's a local nonprofit that is based here in Charlottesville, and they do really good work, not just locally, but all across the globe. So Anne is here to tell us about um, a few of the projects that um, Building Goodness Foundation is involved in. And so without further ado, I'll turn it over to you, Anne. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. If you bear with me for just a moment, I'm going to share my screen here. Let me see if I can get this right. Technology is kind of hard for me. <laughs> All right. Is that, do we see the building opportunity here? Looks good. Okay, excellent. All right, so again, hello and welcome everyone. Um, thanks to you all for joining us on this presentation about the Link Goodness Foundation, or as we like to refer to ourselves, BGF. Uh, just bear with me one moment here, I gotta move this thing. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm really so glad to see so many of you interested in learning about what we do. We've titled this talk, Building Opportunity, because in so many ways, Building Opportunity is our mission. Once again, my name is Anne, and I joined the staff at BGF in January as the Director of Community Engagement. But I've been involved with BGF as a carpentry volunteer for several years now. Um, I love being a part of this organization because the work that we do positively impacts countless people in our community and around the world every year. With us here today also is BGF's Deputy Director, Courtney Polk, who will be helping me answer questions. And I believe in the room, we also have uh, staff members, Ed Thompson. He's uh, BGF's Director of International Projects, hello. And Kathy Garsting, our Director of Local Projects and Operations. So a quick note about questions. If you have questions during the presentation, that is great. Please feel free to use the chat box and I will do my best to monitor the chat during the presentation. Just be aware that it's possible that I might not see your comments um, especially if there are a lot of comments, I promise I'm not intentionally ignoring anybody. All of your questions are welcome. But if you can hold on to your questions until the end of the presentation, we will have the opportunity for a Q&A at the end. Okay. So first of all, who is BGF? How do we work? BGF connects volunteers and construction professionals with opportunities to use their skills for a good cause. We choose projects which will produce high quality buildings, increase our nonprofit partners mission, create jobs and training for local residents and provide transformational experience for our volunteers. And when we work in developing countries, we hire local work crews in order to support economic independence and to contribute to local employment. Where do we work? BGF, um, as mentioned, is based in Charlottesville and has built projects with partners locally in Virginia and also abroad in Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Haiti, Honduras, and Nicaragua. I have a short film here. I'm hoping that our connection will be solid enough for this to work. Um, I think the film will do a better job of showing you who we are than I can by just showing you some slides. Um, so when you watch this, please keep in mind, I think it'll be pretty obvious this was made before the COVID-19 pandemic, okay? Let me give this a try. This has been a really great help for us. We couldn't have done it on our own. It's probably the most rewarding thing that I've ever done in my life. Building Goodness Foundation is a nonprofit construction organization. We build and renovate homes, schools, and health clinics to improve lives in Virginia, Central America, and Haiti. Because we're taking skills to the places where they're needed most. These skilled volunteers from the construction world uh, put them into communities in need to work on community structures that really make a difference. We try to be really mindful to make sure our volunteers are adding value. That usually means focusing on skills training rather than swooping in and doing all the work ourselves. After 
countries we're working in, unemployment rates often are approaching 50%. And so having a reliable job where you're increasing your skill set, that has a huge ripple effect. Il fait mes tutos, je n'ai un salaire pour répondre avec responsabilité à qui avant ou pas bien. The volunteer work that they do is no different than the professional work that their contractors do in the community. They have the same um, level of, of discipline, the same professionalism, same attention to detail. The energy of the volunteers and the and the passion for the values and the mission of those things guide and direct us. That's the heart. Maybe the soul too. BGF selects the highest caliber partners with him to work. Partners who use best practices are financially sustainable and impact the areas we care about most. Education. Healthcare, economic development, and environmental sustainability. Salimos, pero en veces necesitamos algunas partes para consolidar nuestros proyectos y que se puedan realizar. We look for the partners who are making the biggest difference in the community. They all meet under the umbrella that is very important to us, helping people in poverty. Internationally, we find ourselves working in places that are prone to natural disasters. We design everything to be hurricane resistant and earthquake resistant, and we use the engineering products that allow for that to happen. <laughs> Goodness Foundation people came in and they showed that with the proper training and guidance, you can reduce buildings like that in Haiti. Building Goodness Foundation is successful because of our unique approach. We work with partners making the greatest impact on the ground. Skilled volunteers teach skills to a local workforce. And finally, the buildings house programs that meet profound community needs. The result is that the dollars donated to BGF are multiplied into lives and communities that are forever changed. For everybody to pull together the way they pull together, it's been, it's been amazing. This is a great program. <laughs> great program. This project change completely my life, change other people's life, help me support my family, I can help other people. Totally changes everything you understand about the world and it makes you understand what's really important. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, can everyone still hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. <laughs> All right, I love that film, um, and I hope that that did a good job of demonstrating who we are. Okay, oh, don't start over, there we go. <laughs> So how did it all get started? A little bit about our history. Back in 1997, one of BGF's founding members, Jack Stoner, took his first trip to Haiti to help build a rural community center. This trip was so life-changing that Jack convinced his two friends who were also carpenters, Howard Pape and Michael Cernick, to return to Haiti with him. Their experiences building in Haiti sparked a deep attachment to the country and inspired their dedication to continue this kind of work. In 1999, they made things official by creating Building Goodness Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to continuing international volunteer trips to Haiti. But now, 22 years later, Building Goodness Foundation is a highly respected 
nonprofit organization that has coordinated nearly 400 international trips to eight different countries and has expanded focus to include supporting local nonprofits and disadvantaged homeowners here in Virginia. While we are unable to travel right now, we still have good work going on overseas. BGF is partnering with Limitless Horizons Ishiel to build a new school campus in Chihul. Chihul is located in one of the poorest regions of Guatemala and has one of the hardest and was one of the hardest hit during the 36 year civil war. The war amounted to genocide against the indigenous people who are still discriminated against today. The families LHI serves have an average monthly income of $77, far below the extreme poverty line. Nearly half of the parents are illiterate and only 24% completed elementary school. Student performance is suffering. Teachers do not have access to the resources and training that they need and schools lack proper bathroom facilities, clean water and electricity. Safety is of particular concern for girls. Sexual and emotional abuse are a common problem. The vast majority of girls do not pursue high school or post-secondary education. The new Tahul School and Mentoring Campus will serve 120 middle and high school students annually, especially supporting girls in the indigenous community. It aims to prepare their scholars to have choices, to reach their highest potential, including the option of furthering their academic journey and to go on to create opportunity for others. The school will encourage people in Chihul to stay, to thrive, and to build their community. The Soaring Unlimited Women's Health Center is also underway in Northern Haiti. Women's health is a serious issue in Haiti. Their neonatal, infant, child, and maternal mortality rates are the highest in the Western Hemisphere. Soaring Unlimited will provide women with prenatal and postpartum care, provide health care to newborns, and offer family planning to the community. It will also serve as a location for education and training for midwives and other healthcare professionals. I'd also like to talk to you about our TKI and Incentive Chi programs, which are very important to BGF. TKI means small house in Haitian Creole. Through the TKI program, BGF has built over 1,000 permanent earthquake and storm resistant TKIs for Haitians struggling with housing after the 2010 earthquake. This panelized home building program was the cornerstone of our organization's work, creating permanent sustainable housing in Haiti. The Incentive Chi program is BGF's most enduring program. In partnership with the Comprehensive Development Project, through the Haiti Reforestation Partnership, Haitian families earn homes by planting trees. Deforestation is a key challenge in Haiti, contributing to food scarcity and economic instability. Through the Incentive Chi program, families grow new forests, earn a living, and ultimately receive a new home. These families work exceptionally hard, planting typically 100,000 trees over the course of six to 10 years to earn a house. Each home is built on the family's property and is a source of pride and accomplishment. And you can see how, they, how beautiful they, these homes are in this photo. So back home, BGF has been doing a lot of great work here in Charlottesville. Last year, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we launched an initiative called Sea Build Builds which is a coalition of local builders, community members, minority serving organizations, donors and volunteers who are joining together to support a healthy, equitable and prosperous Charlottesville. Evil Builds help small businesses that are struggling as a result of the pandemic, nonprofit organizations that are working for racial justice or supporting our community, and low income homeowners that have urgent home repair needs and who are at high risk for COVID-19. Since its launch, we've been staying very busy with Seville Builds. 15 Seville Builds projects are already completed or in progress with nine others preliminarily approved. Here are photos from a few of our recently completed projects where you can see our volunteers hard at work on a trail map kiosk at the upcoming Botanical Garden of the Piedmont, which will offer Charlottesville residents an opportunity to engage with the outdoors. 
restoration of the historic bleachers at the Burley School baseball field, providing a comfortable seating area for spectators during the games, porch and stair improvements for the Scottsville BFW, ensuring a safe exit for veterans and their families, and a home renovation in partnership with Habitat for Humanity, providing a healthy space for an expanding family. Some special interest has been expressed in our work with these Virginia tribes, which I'm very glad to have the opportunity to talk about. BGF has been working on projects with the Mattapanai for many years, and more recently with the Upper Mattapanai. The Mattapanai and Upper Mattapanai are two separate tribes, part of the Palatan Chiefdom, an alliance of tribes who resided in what is now Virginia for thousands of years. You may recall that Pocahontas was Palatan. The Mattapanai and Upper Mattapanai get their tribal names from the Mattapanai River. The river has been a major source of their survival, providing the people with water, food, transportation, and protection. The river is sacred to them. I'd like to share a short video with you that I put together from a Zoom conversation with Angie Daniel and Diane Garrison, who are both involved with the Mattapanai Healing Eagle Clinic. They very generously shared about the Mattapanai and Upper Mattapanai and the impact of our work together. Angie Daniel is an adjunct professor at Piedmont Virginia Community College. She's an author, and I'll talk about her book a little later. Angie is also the president of a nonprofit organization called American Heritage Voices. Diane Garrison is a veteran, and she serves on the board of the Healing Eagle Clinic. She is deeply involved in its operations. I will let them take it away. Building Goodness Foundation has been with the Mattapanai Eagle, Eagle, Eagle Clinic since its conception, and uh, we, for the most part, and it's been a wonderful relationship. The dream for a healthcare for Virginia Indians started with the late chief. Webster Little Eagle Custolo. It was his idea to come up with a health clinic for Virginia Indians. Because of his health reasons, Chief Webster, Little Eagle, his son, Carl Lone Eagle Custolo, was the acting chief of the Mattapanai tribe at that time. Carl Lone Eagle Custolo later became the chief of the Mattapanai and is now Chief Emeritus. And throughout this whole period, he has been a staunch supporter of the Mattapanai Healing Eagle Clinic since its inception. Their dream for a medical clinic for Virginia Indians was conveyed to Margie Sergeant uh, Sunflower, who had been adopted by Chief Webster Little Eagle. She ends up telling her new medical doctor Dr. Narinda S. Aurora, a pulmonary medical doctor practicing here in Charlottesville, Virginia. And through the efforts of this team, the Mattapanai Healing Eagle Clinic became a reality starting in 1999. The Mattapanai offered the use of the community center, which had been the Pamunkey slash Mattapanai Reservation School in the 1950s during the era of segregation of public schools. The building by this time now though, um, in 1999 was in need of some repairs, especially the roof at that time. In addition, there would need to be a ramp built for wheelchairs and those needing assistance to enter the building. And if you notice in this photograph, when you see the, the next photograph of the community center that became the clinic that is longer than this particular building. So that was the school at one time at its earliest stage. The short version of the story is that the Building Goodness Foundation virtually saved the Mattapanai Community Center and made it safe. Uh, the Mattapanai Healing Eagle Clinic provided much of the funding for the materials, but it was the Building Goodness Foundation that made the repairs, built the ramp. And you can see in this photograph that there is a ramp entering into the side door 
And so on this side, on the right hand side of this photograph, that was an addition that was added later from the original school house. Um, it seemed like there was no job too small or too big for the building fitness foundation. Yeah. <laughs> One of the first jobs they did was a major job. The floor in the main room that was the entrance for the clinic needed major repairs. Both the supports of the flooring and the flooring needed to be replaced. Now, during this time period when this major floor improvement was being accomplished, it was right during the time of the 400th anniversary of Jamestown in 2007. This was a major event for the entire area where Jamestown, Williamsburg, the Virginia Indian tribes, Queen Elizabeth II came. And one of these side events was a bus tour to the regional tribal centers. Okay, so here they are. They, they just got this flooring finished before this bus tour. And many of the persons on the tour were Virginia Indians. When they entered the Mattapanai Community Center, there was an audible gas, a positive one, like, what happened? <laughs> right. mm -hmm. They, it was like a response of awe. Ah. They saw and felt the improvements to the building. The floor was now sturdy and level with a beautiful new flooring. Plus, the Building Goodness Foundation restored the earliest section of the school. That's why I was pointing that out to you earlier. They replaced the light fixture so that they were compatible, compatible with the initial light fixtures. Plus, the original windows were repaired instead of simply being replaced, bringing the school back to its earliest historical state. Not only did they repair the Mad of Nye, community center that was where the clinic was held in. Um, they made numerous repairs on mobile homes and houses on the Manapunai Reservation. In this particular mobile home, they repaired several times before we, we were able to get them a newer mobile home donated. In 2015, the Mattapanai Healing Eagle Clinic had a major restructure of its board. Margie Sunflower resigned due to health reason. It was at this time that Diane Garrison became a board member. But uh, we were able to do 42 COVID-19 vaccines in the upper Mattapanai tribe. And that was through the, uh -huh, that was through the uh, three rivers. Uh, we worked hand in hand getting that so in all in all, we've done about 170 vaccination for all uh, all the tribes up in that area, which will be the Rappahannock, uh, the Upper Mattapanai, the uh, Pamunkey, and the Mattapanai at this time. Okay. Um, I know that video got a little choppy and ended a bit abruptly because of our time limitations. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it is worth repeating that the Mattapanai Healing Eagle Clinic is the location for Virginia tribes to get their COVID-19 vaccinations. So the positive impacts of our partnership continue on. I spoke with Diane Garrison yesterday and she told me that by the end of this weekend, the clinic will have given over 300 vaccines to members of the Native American community. I want to add a few things that I learned from Angie Daniel and Diane Garrison about the history of the Mattapanai. There is a health crisis among Virginia tribes that, are, that is a result of historic economic and cultural oppression. When the Healing Eagle Clinic was founded, Dr. Aurora was quoted as saying this, I see nutritional problems which should not exist in this country that is much, much more prevalent in the nation of the Indians. I see there is no preventative means of any disease process. People do not have health care for their teeth, eyes, and ears. They need simple things such as eyeglasses. Dr. Aurora also saw a prevalence of depression and hopelessness. In her writings about the clinic, Angie Daniel attributes this health crisis in part to a fear of the public health system, which stems from historic oppression. 
Virginia tribes were targeted by eugenics practices in the first half of the 20th century when Native American people could legally be forcibly sterilized in a hospital without their knowledge or consent. The Healing Eagle Clinic has earned the trust of the people as a safe space to receive, to receive health care. In this way, the clinic is crucial to the Mattapani and Upper Mattapani communities. Angie Daniel writes this, the clinic is not only providing medical health care, it is providing hope when there is no hope. It is providing a way when there is no way. This is why the health clinic is so important. The Mattapani Healing Eagle Clinic has been relocated to the upper Mattapani tribal grounds. It is a free clinic that serves all the Virginia tribes and their families. The clinic is entirely donation-based. They do not have any federal funding and they are always in need of supplies. Right now, they're especially in need of diapers, vitamins, and even things like detergent. So please consider donating any of these items on their wish list, and I will let Carolyn tell you more about how you can donate. The, um, the Mattapani and Upper Mattapani hold annual powwows that are open to the general public. They may not have one this year because of COVID-19 safety concerns, and they didn't have one last year, but I would encourage you to check out their websites. If you're interested in learning more about Mattapani history and heritage, I highly recommend this book. Um, it is co-authored by Angie Daniel and Dr. Linwood Costello, The True Story of Pocahontas, The Other Side of History. This book explains the oral tradition of Mattapani history and is a very special opportunity to engage with history that has been passed down very carefully from generation to generation. You can order this book on Amazon. It goes into some fascinating detail about Powhatan culture and of course, Pocahontas. So if you have any questions about Mattapani culture, you will likely find the answers here. I hope that through this presentation, You've learned who Building Goodness Foundation is, what we do, and how we build opportunity. BGF is a community in itself, and I hope that you will consider getting involved. And now I would like to open the floor to any questions. Wow, that was great. Thank you. Do you want to, uh, let's see, stop sharing the screen or do you want to leave that open for now? Sure, I can certainly do that. That's a great suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> we can see everybody. No, that's great. Absolutely. There we go. Hello. <laughs> All right. Um, so I just wanted to um, tell you, if, if you haven't gotten our electronic newsletter this week, we decided to collect donations for the Mattapani Healing Eagle Clinic for the month of April. And so um, there's a big green bin as you walk in. And if you feel so inclined, please do, um, you know, we do different donations. And this is the month we highlight for the, the Healing healing Eagle Clinic. Yes, healing the Eagle, I think. Healing Eagle Clinic. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and thank you so much. We are very excited about that. Well, we love partnering with you on this. It's a great thing. So, and, uh, you know, we're really, uh, I'm very grateful that they're giving COVID vaccinations to Native American peoples, as well as all the other things that, you know, I kind of just take for granted. Healthcare, I take for granted. So. I see a question in the box. Uh, yeah. JJ Simmer asks, does the clinic have a relationship with the Indian Health Service? That is uh, a rather complex question, as far as I understand. I chatted for a while with Diane Garrison about this yesterday, and uh, I'm not in a position where I think I can, you know, intelligently speak about that. Um, but if you do have further questions about, about the complex jurisdiction that is um, the health service, uh, Diane Garrison allowed me to share her information with anyone who has more questions. So I will put that in the chat box for you, okay? I'll give you her email address. And I've people can unmute themselves. So um, if you want to unmute and ask a question, you're more than welcome to. Or you can put it in the chat, whatever's easier for you. Okay, wonderful. Well, I have another question. <laughs> um, I was wondering if uh, some of the other folks from Building Goodness could share their stories of how they got involved in this organization. Sure. So um, I'm here and then 
Kathy is here. Um, I, I, my story is not that exciting. I actually got involved. I lived in Texas um, in 2011 and um, outside of Houston. And I was working for a NASA contractor and doing really good work, but it just didn't get to art. Um, and I really wanted to do something that really spoke to me and that I believed in, you know, and of course I believed in NASA, but I needed something more. And so I started looking around for a job. I wanted to move out of Houston. Um, and I started looking in Virginia and I came across Building Goodness Foundation. And um, the mission and the core values really spoke to me immediately. Um, there's Kathy. And so I applied for a job here in 2011 um, and convinced my Texan husband to move from Texas to Charlottesville so that um, I could quit my job at NASA and work for a nonprofit called Building Goodness Foundation. And it's been a wonderful, crazy ride ever since. But I think really at the heart of it is being a part of something that is both global and local. Um, that's continually striving to work with other organizations collaboratively, um, that involves industry, super smart people and architects and builders um, who all come together to use skills to give back in the way that they know how. And it's amazing, it's beautiful, and it's so exciting to be a part of. So that's what got me hooked in the beginning, and that's why I am still here <laughs> 10 years later. That's a great story. Thank you. Kathy, do you want to share? Sure. Um, so I've, I'm a um, licensed architect here in Virginia. Um, me and my husband have a um, architecture firm practice and have had for 25, 30 years. Um, and in 2009, the economy really tanked for builders and architects. There wasn't much to do. So two unemployed architects in one household was not great. Um, so I searched around for jobs and things to do to get some part-time income. And I found uh, Building Goodness. And I started as a data entry person, um, doing some volunteer tracking of hours, some donations tracking, uh, uh, really digging in our database. And um, the office manager at the time, um, who was a 70 plus year old woman, um, decided it was time for her to retire and I was to take her place. Um, and 11 years later, here I am still doing uh, all kinds of different things at BGF. I'm now uh, not only doing operations uh, work within the uh, organization, I'm uh, running the local projects um, that we have going on with all our Seville Builds projects, all 20 plus of them, and all the Building Goodness in April home repair projects. Building Goodness in April is a annual home repair project we do with the Darden students. That is happening next weekend, April 10th. So you might see us buzzing all over town, doing some home repair projects um, in and around Charlottesville, Admiral County. Um, so there's, there's what, what, what I do with BGF. That's great. Thank you. I, I do have a question um, that maybe some of our folks might be wondering, you know, especially for the Charlottesville. So what if you know um, or are a family in need of some assistance? How would you go about um, seeing if BGF could, could help? That is a great question. Oh, go ahead, Kathy. Yes. Yeah, so um, first and foremost, um, pick up the phone and call us. Um, our phone number uh, 434-973-0993. Um, find us on the web, buildinggoodness.org. Um, certainly when we, when we talk about having uh, homeowners that are low income or elderly, we have to recognize that they may not have the, the technology um, to do Zoom meetings, to, to email us, to put in an inquiry online. So certainly picking up the phone and just calling us is a good way but we do have a bunch of information on our website for Seville Builds for applying to be a homeowner that needs help. Um, it can be referred to by anybody, a, 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 a mother, daughter, brother, sister, child, a neighbor. We've had lots of neighbors refer uh, a neighbor. Um, so any number of ways to, to reach us. 
That's great. That's a really great resource. Thank you. And I would like to add one thing. Um, if you would like to receive emails about volunteer opportunities, or if you'd like to receive our newsletter, please um, let me know. I put my email address in the um, in the chat box here, and I can add you to our our list. And um, also, once we can safely host in person events again, if you're on our mailing list, you will learn about those, and you'll also be learning about any vir virtual events. So that's a great way to keep in touch with us. Super. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from anyone? It's such a great organization to have right in our, our backyard, if you will. I have a question. Virginia. Thanks. Um, when the volunteers go to Haiti or some of those places, how is that funded for those volunteers to go? Do you have to pay for it yourself? Does uh, BGF help sponsor some of that? How does that work? Yeah, I can speak to that. So um, great question. So it, it, it kind of depends. So usually in our project budget, we include some funding for travel for our volunteers. Um, and that is typically reserved for the volunteers who have a specific skill set. So in Haiti and in Guatemala, wherever we're building, we are using local crews. So we have a Haitian crew or a Guatemalan crew who are working, but um, so that we employ local folks who have skills. But especially in Haiti, we don't necessarily have a lot of plumbers or electricians or roofers. And so what we do is we'll send down a skilled person from the United States on a team of skilled folks. So we typically reserve the money that is in the budget for travel for the very specific skilled people we need to go. So if we need a plumber and we know we have a plumber, um, we often will use that funding to send the plumber. Um, folks who want to join a trip um, and you know don't necessarily have a construction skill per se um, are usually welcome as well. Um, and those folks typically pay their own way. And a lot of our folks will fundraise. Um, we offer some support for that. They'll just set up a page, you know, and use go through their church or their community, um, you know, their family. And a lot of folks will fundraise the majority of the cost for a trip. And would that be mostly just the airfare or is there, yep. are there more? Yep. Um, it depends on where, but places like Haiti, the expense is mostly airfare um, because it's not expensive to stay. It's usually about half the cost of the trip fee is airfare. Of course, we haven't gone in a while because of COVID, um, but it's mostly airfare. And then, you know, it covers food and it covers accommodations. It covers transportation. It covers insurance um, for our volunteers. So um, it's all inclusive. Great. Did that answer your question, Virginia? Yes. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Well, I do. I guess I have another question. The uh, for the clinic. The now I'm I'm gonna mess up the the Native American's name. Madame Panay. And would that be something like a um like a day type thing that you go? Because I'm not. Look, I'm from Virginia, but I'm not sure where King Webb County is. So how far it is from Charlottesville? So is that something that's a, a day thing or, or if it's a project that lasts a week, you're there a week or, and if so, are you on the uh, travel land staying or hotel or, or that, questions like that? So I'll, I'll take that one. Um, so we could typically go there just for a day. It's usually a day trip we meet. It's, usually before 6 a.m. It's dark and we drive the two hours. It's a real easy drive um, east. You go, you bypass around uh, Richmond 295 and just spur off um, there just a little ways. It's, it's quite easy to get to. Uh, we get there by 8, 8.30, we get to work. We work all day, we bring in lunch. Um, and then by the time we get done at four or five o'clock in the afternoon, we drive home. So we, we plan our scope of work. Um, we have project managers, volunteers that, that um, organize that. So they know I'm gonna have five people 
this is what we can get, should be able to get done in a day, bring all the tools and materials for those projects for that day. Um, and we might do that once a month for six months for a particular project. Um, and then sit back and when the clinic has the next set of needs and next set of maintenance, then we'll plan again um, to get down there. Great, thank you. All right, well, if there's no further questions, thank you so much for coming and joining us. Thank you, Anne, and thank you, the rest of the staff um, at Building Goodness Foundation, Courtney and Kathy, we appreciate it. And um, we have your phone number, we have Anne's email address. Uh, yeah, okay. A big, big thanks to the center for hosting us and reaching out and to everyone who came for, we're learning more, so it's great to see you all. Agreed. Right. Thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you.